You see those next three examples, four, five, and six. Now, <clears throat> I know when we do some of these things, you guys are like, how did you know to do that? How did you know to, you have, again, the more practice you have with this, you'll start to see when you do certain things in certain situations. And you'll see each one of these is a little different, just like the first three, so I can give you guys some tips and tricks and stuff like that. So remember, you should have your identities right here in front of you so you can see them. Now it says to verify. They're telling you that the left-hand side of the equal sign is the same as the right. You're showing me why. So we're going to go ahead, do our little T-chart. Remember, we want to find the side that's the most complicated. Which side looks more complicated? Or which, tell me which side is more complicated. The right side. Why do you say the left, Kozlowski? Uh, because there's a plus sign. What happens on the right-hand side? Those are multiplication, right? So all we could do is just change this to sine, cosine. If you wanted to go ahead and change that to sine and cosine, feel free. You guys don't have to. It's not like you're not allowed to touch some, one of the other sides. You just want to focus on the one that's a little more difficult. But we'll work through it. I'll show you. Again, there's different ways to see everything. So don't think there's just one specific way to do this. If you guys see it a different way, that's okay. But if I look on the left-hand side, <clears throat> okay, let's talk about it. Do you see anything squared that's attached to a plus or minus one? No. So there's no Pythagorean identities. Um, I don't have any fractions or anything to get rid of. So let's just go to our two most basic trig functions, which are sine and Cosine, right? What can I change tangent to? Okay, so sine, I'm going to change to theta over cosine theta. Plus, what am I going to change cotangent to? You could do one over tangent, good. Or go to cosine and sine. We'll look at your identities in the middle. Tangent, sine over cosine. So what's cotangent? Cosine over sine. You guys agree? All right. <coughs> How do we think, guys? How do we think? Algebraic. We think algebraically. Thank you. So these are just two fractions that we're doing what? Adding. adding together. When you add fractions, you have to get a common. What's your common denominator between cosine and sine? Cosine and sine. You just stick them together. Remember, we multiply. So you got a cosine. <clears throat> and you got a sign. So get a common denominator. Now we have to say, okay, well, my first fraction in pink, the denominator has a cosine. What is it missing? A sine. So if you multiply the bottom by sine, what do you do to the top? Multiply by sine. What's sine times sine? Sine squared. Good. <clears throat> Look at your second fraction. It has the sine. What is it missing? So if you multiply the bottom by cosine, what do you do to the top? Cosine. What's cosine times cosine? Cosine squared theta. All right. <clears throat> Anybody notice anything? <coughs> what equals one? The numerator equals one, doesn't it? Sine squared plus cosine squared, guys, on your Pythagorean identities equals what? One. So you're left here with one over... Cosine theta times sine of theta. All right, now where are we trying to get to? Secant, secant and cosecant. Is there a relationship, guys, between one, uh, cosine and secant? Or between sine and cosecant? What are those of each other? What are sine and cosecant of each other? What are cosine and secant of each other? <laughs> They're opposites. They're reciprocals, aren't they? Now, thinking algebraically, guys, <clears throat> can I split this up? Say 1 over cosine times 1 over sine. I'm allowed to do that algebraically, right? If you multiply those together, don't you get 1 over sine times cosine? Okay, so if I split those up, you don't have to. I mean, you can just look at it and see. But if you split them up, what's another way I could write 1 over cosine? What's an, look on your reciprocal identities, guys. You have the identities in front of you. Look at them. What's 1 over cosine? Secant. And then what is 1 over sine? What is 1 over sine? Cosecant. Isn't that exactly what we were trying to get to? 
right? I have people all the time say, I, I went like this, and, and this is fine, guys. You don't have to only, it's not that you're not allowed to ever touch the other side. It's just easier sometimes if you only focus on one. But some people are like, well, right off the bat, I went like this. I said, this is one over cosine, and this is one over sine. If you want to just take one step to kind of see, okay, wait, where am I? Because look, didn't we get there right there? As long as you are algebraically and mathematically proving that the left-hand side is the same as the right, that's okay. I'm not telling you you're not allowed to touch the other side. I'm just saying it's easier to focus on one of them rather than getting yourself super confused. Just my thoughts. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the next one. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, this is a tricky one. This is, again, this is why I picked all these examples. <clears throat> all right, both these sides don't look great, right? They're not super. But what do you notice? Which one looks a little more difficult? The right. The right, I agree. Why does the right look more difficult? Because it's a fraction. It has a fraction. All right, now, in this case, guys, <clears throat> whenever we have a fraction, we would immediately want to get rid of the what? No. You want to get rid of the denominator. You want to try to get rid of it. So how can we do that? Well, let's think algebraically. Let's talk for a second. If I have, um, if I have this. And I said to you guys, what's the problem? What's the issue here? And when I put up this example up here, what's the problem? There's an I where? In the denominator. So we would say we have to get rid of it, right? So what would we multiply by? The same thing, but what? Five plus three, five plus three I, the conjugate, right? Because that'll make your I's cancel out. Well, think about what would happen here if we multiplied this by the conjugate. It's not going to make anything cancel out, but what's going to happen when you multiply by the conjugate? What are you going to create? An x squared, right? You're going to, make, you're going to create one of those Pythagorean identities. Whenever you guys start off with a denominator, it's only one, right? It's not that we're adding them together and we're trying, but think about it. When you are trying to get a common denominator and stuff and you pull together, you multiply the denominators together. <laughs> If you have just one single denominator and you're trying to get rid of it, multiply by the conjugate. 98% of the time, it's going to create an identity. So I'm going to leave the numerator alone. Don't go ahead and you don't have to foil that all out. Just leave it alone. Just stick it together. <clears throat> but when you foil the bottom, what does that become? Well, let's do it. What's 1 times 1? One. What's one times positive sine x? Sine x. What's negative sine x times one? Negative sine x, right? And then what's negative and negative? I mean negative and positive, it's negative sine squared. Okay, so what happens to your sine x is in the middle. And then you're left with one minus sine x squared. What does that equal? Yes, very good. So cosine x, and then you have one plus sine x over cosine squared, correct? You guys agree? Okay. <clears throat> so now what? Cancel what? Cancel this cosine here and then one here. So you're left with 1 plus the sine of x over cosine x. And where are we trying to get to? <coughs> Secant plus tangent. All right. Now this is where you guys are going to have to think a little bit. This is where I tell you, take a step back. Look at the one side that you're trying to get to. Look where you're coming from. There's two, there's two ways you could do this one. I'm going to do it both ways. What's up? Oh, no. no, tell me. Tell, what, what are you thinking? Oh, I was going to say, like, can't you do one over cosine x? Oh, wait, no, never mind. Ah, finish what you're saying. One over cosine x and then sine over cosine listen, x. Listen to what Kozlowski just said. He was about to tell himself. No, no, never mind. That's not right. Can we split this up into one over cosine x plus sine x? over cosine x. Are you allowed to do that algebraically? Yeah. There's one denominator on the bottom. Remember when, if you're trying to simplify, if there's a plus on the top, that denominator goes to both. Well, when you do that, what does one over cosine become? Secant x, good. Plus what? What's sine over cosine? Tangent x. Kozlowski, a million dollars. Good job. That was fit. Great. 
and don't doubt yourself. So say, guess what? Say you said that and you wrote it out and it didn't work. No big deal. You would you could see, okay, hey, that didn't work. Talk to me. Would you multiply by the conjugate if you don't have to multiply your side No, because you're you're not <clears throat> good question. You are you're dealing with it separately. You're not trying to find out what x equals. Like you're not solving anything here, right? You're just trying to you're just trying to break down that side. That's all. Now look, say you get to this point, right? And you're like, I don't I don't know where to go from there. Right? That's gonna happen to some of you. You're gonna say, I don't know what to do. Instead of just quitting, if you wanna look at the other side, go ahead. If we looked at the other side, right? We get to this point right here where I have starred, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And you say, let me just go to the other side and see if I can figure anything out. Well, what could I do on the other side here? What can I break secant into? One over cosine, right? Plus, what can I change tangent into? Sine over cosine. Do you see how you just created equivalency? You showed me that you understand, hey, okay, I broke down the right-hand side and I got to this point. And then I, I don't know what else to do. So then I looked on the left-hand side and I said, wait a second. I do see that these two are equal. There is not going to be just one specific answer here. There could I, the next problem we did, I did it one way, Ms. Carver did it another way, and then I math weighed it, and math weighed it did it a whole other way that was way longer than either Ms. Carver or I did. <laughs> there is going to be a bunch of different ways to do things. So you guys just have to, you have to first of all be a little confident in yourself, <clears throat> and then you have to make sure, you have your identities, just make sure, hey, okay, this supports this thinking. This makes sense with this, all right? Everybody with me? <clears throat> All right, let's do the last one. I'm going to do this two, day, two ways. Let's just talk about this problem. First of all, which side looks a little more difficult? The left. The left. Agreed, because you have a plus sign in the denominator. <clears throat> All right. Do you see... Well, we'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> With what we just did... Because I want you guys to get in your minds that you can do stuff like this. How can I break up this right-hand side? What's another way I could break that up into two different fractions? One. One, what? Over sine, good. And then minus sine over. sine over sine. Okay, I agree. Now, this is just a side note. I just want you guys to see how you can manipulate stuff. What could I do with that now? How could I rewrite that? What's one over sine? Cosecant, good. And then what's sine divided by sine? One. Okay. I just want you guys to see that. All we did, just looking at that, we just broke it up. Now, again, you guys are going to attack these problems differently. I understand that. But understand, if your mind sees a line of thought, go ahead and write it down. Maybe it'll help you at some point. Now, when I looked at this, I saw that this was yucky, right? This was not great. <clears throat> So I said, okay, let me look at the left-hand side. I see a cotangent squared, and then I have one plus cosecant. My thought, just because my brain, I went up and I said, let me look at my identities here. Cotangent is the same as what? What's cotangent squared the same as? Cosecant squared what? Minus one, okay. So... I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and change the cotangent into cosecant squared minus 1. And then over 1 plus cosecant theta. Now, some of you are like, why'd you do that? Well, how do I tell you guys to think? Algebraically. Can I break this down? To what? No, no, no. Can I break this down? X squared minus 4. What is it? X minus 2 and, okay, what about this? Can I break this down? Mm -hmm. To what? What about this? Can I break this down? <coughs> what? X plus 1, X minus 1? All right, you guys are like, why are you doing that? Can I factor the top? What can I factor this into? Cosecant 
plus one and cosecant minus one. It's a difference of two squares. That's fine. Now, do you guys notice anything? What can I cancel? I can cancel this with this, can I? And I'm left with cosecant theta minus one. All right, now, huh, how did that help me? Well, what was that little side work, that little thinking I did at the beginning? Hmm? It just proved it, look. There's your, guys, look, you just proved right here. Now, some of you are like, what? How did you just do that? That's okay. I'll do it another way. It's okay. Yeah, how would you have Hold on. All right, let's do it another way. Let's do it again. So I have, what was it? Okay, cotangent squared. No. Yeah. Like this? Okay. All right, so good question. How would you do it if it was another way? All right, well, let's try the way that we just did the last one. Remember, if we had a denominator, we multiplied by the conjugate. You guys agree? Mm -hmm. So what would the conjugate be of 1 plus cosecant theta? What's the opposite of 1 plus cosecant theta? <coughs> 1 minus, okay. Um, could I rewrite 1 plus cosecant theta as cosecant theta plus 1? Yeah? I mean, you don't have to. I'm just saying. Okay, let, let's just do this. Okay, so 1 minus right? And then one minus. You guys agree? Okay, so <clears throat> you have cotangent squared of theta times one minus cosecant theta over. When you FOIL this, you have one plus cosecant theta minus cosecant theta, right? Minus cosecant squared theta. You guys agree? Okay, so this will cancel out. So we're left with cotangent squared of theta, one minus cosecant theta. And then the bottom here, we have one minus cosecant theta squared, correct? Everybody with me? All right. <clears throat> now, this, we still have the difference of perfect squares on the bottom. Don't we? <clears throat> it's harder when you guys have to do it. God bless you. If I lead you, it's a little easier. If you got to this point now, then what would you do? Okay, look at your identities. And what do we say? Okay, so cotangent squared, what's the identity? Cotangent squared equals what? Cosecant squared minus one, all right. Do I have this right here? What I have underlined in pink, are those two things exactly the same? No. No. But we did something yesterday where we could make it the same using algebra. <laughs> you divide by one. You could take out a negative one or something, right? That's totally fine to do. If I took out a negative one, I'm just going to stick it out there. We're just taking it out in front. I have one minus. And on the bottom here, this would be negative one plus cosecant squared, right? When I divide out the negative, so it would be cosecant squared minus one. Do you, are you guys okay with that? We, we just, all we did was just change the, we changed the signs, right? Look, we changed this sign on, on here and here. We, we, I'm sorry, here and here. We've just flipped the sign. So when we did that, what we just, we can now replace this with cotangent squared of theta, correct? Is that a plus, cosecant squared plus one at the bottom? Yeah. 
isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you added the negative. Right. We took the negative out. So now look, what happens with, so we just replaced that. So now what happens with our cotangents? What happens? They can cancel. Okay. So now I'm left with negative what? One minus cosecant theta. What's another one? What would I do with that negative now? It's one. Negative one. What? Plus cosecant theta. Which, how could I rewrite that? Cosecant theta minus one. You guys agree? Okay. So now you got all the way down here and you're like, but I'm trying to get to this. I'm trying to get to that. Well, think about it. How can I rewrite this? I could rewrite this as 1 over sine, correct? You guys agree? Use one side to help you get to the other. I could rewrite that as 1 over sine. And then what's another way I could write the whole number 1 so it looks like this? Sine over sine. So you could leave it as sine over sine. You could rewrite it if you wanted to over one denominator. That's fine. You can do it either way. Either way is fine. This way is a little harder. Why is it a little harder? Because of that negative. It made it a little harder to flip. It was a little trickier. But you can still do that. You can still multiply by the conjugate and then use your identities. That's fine. But I know some of you are like, oh, Lee, this is so hard. I know it is, guys. I know this is difficult. It's just something that you have to practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. It is not simple. I know that. But the more you practice it, you'll start to, I promise you, you'll start to see some things. And there are some guys that are a lot harder than others. I know that. I'm not going to give you any that are so difficult that you're going to just be super frustrated. That's not my goal. I just, this is about thinking and problem solving. 